Another thing that you can create from scratch, like a title, is what's called a generator. And Final Cut Pro has a whole category of generators that are basically footage or, or media that you can create from within the program. You don't need to import anything. You can just load it up from within the program. And you find the generators in the little countdown button over here. This opens the generators browser. And here you see we've got four categories of generators, backgrounds, elements, solids, and textures. And just to start with the solids for to begin with, you know, these are basically just solid color backgrounds. And while it seems like these are really, really simple and there's just a, you know, five or six colors in here, you can actually make any color you want. If you just apply one of these, I'm just let's go ahead and just apply the whites one. I'm just going to double click it and that's going to add it to my timeline here. Uh, if I select it and go to the inspector, there'll be a generators pane. And here you see I get some parameters. Now, you know, this is off white. There's actually seven different off whites. There's antique white and bright white and cream and ivory, and mint, and <laughs> smoky, right? So you, all those different settings, you know, under something just called whites. Let's delete that one. And, you know, if we choose, I don't know why this is called iMovie. This is basically just, I guess these were colors that were available in iMovie. It seems ridiculous to me that there is a filter called iMovie for a bunch of plain colors. But anyway, if you want to choose one of those six colors, you could do that. Or you could just do the custom uh, if you apply the custom, then you can pick any color you want. And that's what I would probably do myself. I would just pick whatever. Let's go to play it over there. Pick, you know, whatever color it is that you want from the entire spectrum rather than just the six colors available in iMovie. Anyway, custom grayscale, iMovie pastel. You know, it's nice to have some presets there. And similarly, in the textures category, these are sort of fun textural elements. You have a gradient, fabric, grunge, industrial, natural, metal. And the beautiful thing about these is just like the colors, there are additional parameters. So for any of these categories, we can choose one of these. Let's just choose wood. And I'm just going to add the wood there. And then we can choose what kind of wood. Let's put our playhead over so we can see. Pick a color that you want or pick a type of wood, rather poplar or walnut, and then you can further tint it if you wanted to add a color. You can make it, you know, a greenish walnut and so forth. So you can you can customize these a great deal. Something a little bit more dramatic, if I go to natural and I apply the natural, the options here are not just different uh, colors, but they're actually completely different images. So for that, that's cocoa lashings, but we can also go to bark. Right, there's a couple different barks and a couple different bamboos, a grass, wheat grass. And again, you can tint these, you can change the color of them. So you can do a whole lot of interesting modifications to these. These they're not animated, they're just static images, but they can be nice backgrounds. And you can use these, you know, for the background for a text object, or if you wanted to, you know, have an interstitial element between two other things, you could use one of these elements uh, in that way. And the same is true for grunge and industrial and fabric. And I'll let you go in and play with them because they're fun to experiment with and, and see all the different fabrics available or all the different grunge textures available and so on. The one last one I will talk about is the gradient. And if you look at the gradient, this is uh, similar to the gradient element that we were playing with when we were doing the text. But it's actually kind of cool because there's this on-screen control. So you can control exactly where you want the gradient to go. So I can drag the position of my gradient. I can do a horizontal gradient or I can do a, a subtle diagonal gradient. And you can, you know, change those colors, of course. Go in here and change it from, you know, white to yellow or whatnot. And, you know, any colors you want to add and go from a linear to a radial, right? And if it's radial, you can still control it with, the, with these uh, custom controls here. So pretty useful to be able to manipulate those graphically on screen like that. And again, this can become a really nice background element, especially if you use really nice subtle colors. So if we're just using uh, you know, very similar colors like that, it creates a really nice little wash. And of course, all generators are video clips. So everyone has a video tab where you can make adjustments in the transform, crop, distort, and so forth. All these other categories, the overall opacity of your object, you know, all the things you can do with any video clip, you can do with a generator as well.